Here we are in our little intermission from actually animating, and we're going to explore some of the selection tools and filtering tools that are unique to the graph editor in Unit 2.2. One of the first things that we want to deal with is what we're seeing in the graph editor, which is first of all predicated upon what is actually selected. So you select an object, its data shows up in the graph editor, now, there's a little arrow down here that is currently depressed, only include channels relating to selected objects and data. All that means is what you select is what you see in the graph editor. It is, however, possible to see other objects who are not actually selected in the graph editor as well. I'm going to turn that off. Now, there's no additional data here right now. We do have another object hidden in the scene, but its visibility is turned off. If I turn its visibility on, the graph editor will recognize it. So I have a second sphere over there with slightly different animation. Even though it's not selected, its animation curves are still read in. If I toggle that on and off, it goes from what is selected to everything that is available. Once again, that could get pretty messy if you have 10 or 20 objects in the scene, but that's pretty much how it works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide that armature and that ball again. But let's say for the sake of argument, I wanted to see their animation data without actually seeing the object. There's a little icon there that looks like a ghost, like a little Pac-Man symbol. I'm going to click on that. That will also call in any object, whether or not it's actually visible in the scene or not. Once again, that might be a Pandora's box, a lot more stuff than you want to see, but those are the tools and that's how they behave. The default is having the ghost off and this on. So selection, what you see, is what you get. Now, there's yet another form of selection in the graph editor. Of course, I can grab my keys when I'm just here in the menu. I can either click in the graph editor itself. That will move the 2D cursor, which you may not want to do. Otherwise, you can click on the top of the window to activate it. So A, I select everything, deselect everything. Notice as I do that, the list is either highlighting or going gray. So the keys and the data is all still there. But the idea is I click on one of these to highlight it, it assumes that is the one I'm interested in and shows us the thicker, more saturated display. I can grab all of these and I can use a marquee select by hitting B. I can also click on them individually or if I go B and use the middle mouse, I can deselect them. If I activate a curve by selecting one of its keys in the graph editor, the display will also activate. Also, we have our little eyeballs here as well. I'll activate these all again so that we can see them with the B key. I can go through these one by one until their display turns on or off. I can also do it with a blanket hotkey just by hitting H in the graph editor itself. That will immediately hide everything. Alt H to bring it back. Bear in mind anything I had selected is still selected, but once it's hidden it cannot be moved or transformed. It can only be moved or transformed if it is in fact visible. And there are still a couple of other more wacky features down here in the graph editor's view menu as well. So if we go down to the view menu, we'll see a whole bunch of items down here. One which is fairly important to us is only selected keyframe handles. If we turn that off, we'll see handles on everything. So that's a little bit messy. I mean, we can go in and we can go grab it, etc., etc., but it creates a lot of visual clutter. But if you want to see all your handles simultaneously, you can. I'm going to turn that back on so we don't see that anymore. Go back to the view menu, look at the next option, only selected curve keyframes. So I'm going to click that and I'm going to deselect some of the curves in the list. Their curve shape is still there, but their keyframes are no longer visible. So if I toggle that menu again, the keyframes return. The mode that I'm in right now is typically the default, where if you select something, you'll see its handles and the curves will become thicker. And as we discussed in an earlier unit, at any time, you can go Control h and toggle that to turn your handle display on and off. As well, at any time you have a lot of stuff displayed and you want to kind of start from scratch, you can hit H, hide everything, and go back and selectively turn on what you want. You can also just hit Alt-H to make everything return. Now, a couple of other tools that are worth looking at in the context of the graph editor are your side-to-side -side arrow keys move you along a frame at a time, the up and down arrow keys jump you back and forth to the next keyframe. This also functions whether you're looking in the graph editor or not. It just looks for the keyframes on the object itself that you can see in the timeline as well. Some other neat selection tools are, I'm going to move my cursor over to this side 
of the parabola. And if I go to the square bracket keys, the left key will select all the keys to the left of current time. The right will select all the keys to the right of current time. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Also, to get a little more specific, I'm going to go B, grab a set of keys, and then I can also do Control I for invert. Now, let's say for the sake of argument, you want to select all of the keyframes at frame 17. It could be quite the tower of keyframes. What you can do is deselect, hit Control K, all the keyframes at that frame will be selected. You can also do it independent of the timeline by selecting a key and hitting K, that is column select. Funny that both hotkeys for selecting a column start with the letter K. Oh well. Let's get back to Shul and learn some more stuff. Now the next question is, how would you select a row as opposed to a column? The functionality is a little bit different. I'm going to deselect and go Alt B. I'm going to draw a rectangular box. That selected only that grouping of keys. And the reason it did that, I draw a box. It will select everything on either side of the long sides of the rectangle. I will just demonstrate again. Alt B. Deselect. Alt B. A unique tool, a little odd, but potentially useful. So once again, deselect. Right now I'm just going to do some animation playback to once again see what we have. We've discussed this before, but it's worth going over again since we're in the context of working in this list. Little speaker icon will mute a channel. It's still there, just the light switch is turned off. I can turn that back on. I can also hit lock. It's still there, it is functioning. I cannot select or move it. What's also nice is you can drag swipe over these and unlock, mute or unmute, all of these virtually simultaneously. Now it is worth noting there are some menu settings for this as well. Down here in channel, disable channel, enable channel, toggle channel setting. All three of those menu items in fact actually do the same thing, either offer lock or mute. So just hover over the list and hit shift W and be done with it. Okay, that's it. Intermission's over. Time to get back to work bouncing that ball. See you in 2.3. And now for our feature presentation.